Hey, what's going on guys? I'm back today. I wanted to shoot just a quick video about kind of what to do on when you get in an accident. I know it's one thing that I, you know, have always kind of wondered about if, uh, I thankfully haven't been in any big accidents yet, but you know, if I was in one, it'd be nice to kind of have a little checklist you can go through or a nice, you know, list that you know of things that you need to get done when you're in an accident. And so first and foremost, it's always a good idea to check and make sure that you and your passengers are all right. That's step number one always. And after you do that, make sure that the other person that was in the accident is all right. And if no injuries are there, then you can move on. But that's, I mean, safety is first and foremost, no matter whose fault it was, no matter what's happening. And, you know, if it's not safe, you know, you need to call 911 and then get people to safe areas and don't just hang out in the roadway. But with that out of the way, I'm just kind of talking about, you know, fender benders or minor accidents where usually there's not really going to be any injuries. You know, maybe something in a parking lot or, you know, just low speed impacts, stuff like that. Usually you're going to want to call the police to get a police report going on it because that's just going to make it go faster for your insurance because they like to have those kind of things and uh, that'll just expedite that process. So you probably want to get them involved unless, you know, I was in a a little fender bender one time and we just opted to just do it just ourselves. I got his contact info and we ended up just handling it ourselves. It was very, very small uh, in a parking lot. So that's up to your discretion, of course. But so yeah, step number one, make sure everybody's safe. Step number two, get the police out there to check it out and file a report. And then uh, number three, you're going to want to just move the cars out of the roadway if you can that way you're not hogging up the flow of traffic and all that with your accident try to get it out of the roadway as best you can and you know if you can't do that you can't do that but or if you're in a parking lot there's not really that big a worry but just try to be try to be out of the way as much as you can and after you do that you're just going to swap info with you know whoever you were in the accident with i like to keep a let me see if i've got it in here yeah i just like to keep a little notepad in my center console and uh you know maybe have one of those in a pen there you know have a variety of uses inside your car uh from shopping list to whatever taking orders at sonic but you know if you have one of those you can take down the information that i'm about to talk about so you're going to want to get obviously the other person's name and their contact information so get their full name and their contact information get their insurance provider's name or what company they use and then get their policy number with them and then you're going to want to get their license plate number as well as their driver's license number. And you're going to want to get also the location. And it might not be a bad idea to take notes on maybe the type of vehicle um, and the make and model. If you can get that or if they'll tell you the year or whatever, that's even better. But you'll want to log all that information down and the police will want to know it. And then when the police get there... It's not a bad idea. I've seen it recommended that you get their names and their badge numbers so that you have a record of everybody that was involved. I think that would probably apply more in like a kind of serious accident situation. I don't know if like a fender bender you need to get the officer's badge numbers, but you never know, maybe. It doesn't it doesn't hurt to, you know, go ahead and go overboard with the info. It can only help really. Um in case you need it later. You never know. Better safe than sorry. But that's pretty much what the, you know, that's the extent of the information you need to get. And you're also going to want to take some pictures. And so you've logged down their license plate number, but it's not a bad idea to also take a picture of it. That way, if you lose your notepad or whatever, you've still got their, got their license plate number handy on those pictures. And then you're going to want to obviously take a picture of all the damage um, that occurred. Try and get it from multiple different angles because that's going to better help your insurance agents deal with you know, the damage and all of that. Make sure you can really show a nice before and after. Uh, that's only going to help expedite the insurance process that we all know is so slow. And, uh, but yeah, that's about it. It's, it's comes off as a lot right now and it can be a lot in the moment, especially if you're in a more serious accident, but those are the things you should keep in mind and kind of the order in which you should do them. Uh, let's see what else. I guess I saw one woman on Pinterest, I guess she was an insurance agent. She complained about people coming to her, you know, they were in an accident and they were trying to file a claim, but they only had about half the information they needed, which she said really annoyed her. And she also said that it was really annoying that people didn't expect to pay a deductible, even if they weren't the ones at fault. So I guess depending on your policy, make sure you know what, you know, you're covered under, what the rules of your policy are. 
but uh, just, I guess, expect to pay that deductible even if you're not at fault. I mean, if you're going to be getting compensation, probably you're going to pay your deductible. Just something to expect, but not a lot of everybody, you know, not everybody wants to pay that or, you know, I guess wishful thinking. But I guess just expect to pay that if you're in any kind of altercation because it is what it is. Um, that's insurance for you. But I guess that's kind of, you know, the little bonus tip here. Just expect to pay a lot of money. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to make it a little quick, but I guess it kind of rambled on a little bit. But I hope you enjoyed the, you know, the couple things you need to look out for when you're in an accident. I'm a little backlogged on videos right now. This is, you know, the tip for Tuesday, June 5th. But I've got a couple other videos I've got to make at some point, and I'll get those up. But if you like this kind of video, and if you want to see more of the other videos when they come out, or even videos that I've already released, go ahead and head on over to the channel. I'll link it somewhere over here, and take a look and see what other video tips I've got up. There's a little little tricks, hacks, tips, information, all that kind of stuff. And then I've got some specific type of kind of repair videos for very specific issues that I've run across. And I'll be making those as I come across those more and more. I've actually got a wheel hub that's out on this truck right now. So I'll be making a video about that sometime when I get around to fixing it. And so be looking for it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Uh, the subscribe link is going to be around here. Uh, or, you know, down below, there's a subscribe link and then hit the hit the bell to get notified. Anyways, guys, appreciate you watching. Love it as always. And uh, happy wrenching out there.